Introducing the newest turbo controller, the DualSense Edge for the PlayStation 5. If you're old, like me, you might be able to picture the turbo controllers of the 16 and 32-bit console eras, the ones with a gazillion face buttons. This is their modern descendant. It keeps appearances pretty uniform with the standard PS5 controller, but rest assured, Sony has packed lots of cool bells and whistles in here to appease your inner pro gamer looking for an upgrade. Hi, I'm Andrew from Apt, and this is the Sony DualSense Edge wireless controller. And this is an ordinary PS5 controller just called DualSense. This ordinary guy is $70. The DualSense is $200. What gives? Well, this one has Edge in the name, which is, I mean, that is pretty cool. It also has two fully customizable buttons, two slots or extra buttons on the back, the ability to save and switch between control prof profiles quickly, uh, adaptable triggers and hardware enabled stops, adaptable control sticks and swappable options, and customizable sensitivity and dead zones, a carrying case, slip resistant grips, and doodads galore. So, a couple of things, but really that name, Edge. Like that Pizza Hut pizza that came out in the 90s alongside that one wilderness movie with Anthony Hopkins and I think it was Alec Baldwin. It's just me. Noted. Let me dive into the controller a little more then to give you a kind of knowledge. Edge. I'm so sorry. The DualSense Edge is Sony's first attempt at a pro level controller for its system. You can find third-party pro controllers, but the best corollary to this guy is Microsoft's Xbox Elite Series 2 for their first-party system. And as you might have guessed by the two in there, that was not Microsoft's first attempt at a pro controller. So, what is a pro controller? And do you need one? Let's start with the latter. No, no, you do not need one. I didn't actually get it at all for a while. It's nearly three times the price. It's not changing the games. I'm all about the game experiences themselves. And games are designed for the base controller. So you're not gonna be missing any feature of a game that's locked out until you get this, which is a good thing. And if you're looking to become a pro gamer, step one, practice. If you stink at Call of Duty or Overwatch, Guess what? Buying this on its own is not going to make you good at Call of Duty or Overwatch. Right. At first, I thought this thing was silly. And then, app's videographer and editor, Prince, gave me a little talking to. I've asked him to recreate his speech on camera. Let's see how it goes. Why do you love this controller so much? Okay. So, I love this controller for a few different reasons. Uh, one, it looks absolutely amazing. It feels great uh, but my biggest thing we're playing Astro's Playroom right now I would much rather be playing Black Desert Online and the reason why is it's one of my favorite MMORPGs but uh, in that game you have a lot of different inputs that you have to do so to do a skill you'll have to hold the L2 button and square or you'll have to do L2 circle R1 R2 so instead of having to like cramp your hands around and push a, different, a bunch of different buttons you can remap L2 square to just be this back trigger that we put onto the controller. Um, also, when you're shooting, if you're playing a shooting game, most of the time we're gonna use Astro's Playroom as, a, as an example, but if I'm pushing the X button, which is to jump, right? This is, this left analog stick is to move around and the right stick is to look left, right, up and down. If I want to jump and look at the same time, I have to move my thumb in two different times, right? But now I've mapped the jump button to this back trigger that we placed into the controller. So now me pushing this back trigger is also working as if I was just pushing X. So now while I'm playing, I can actually be moving around and jumping along at the same time. Same thing with the melee square is to punch, but I've also mapped square to the left bumper that we put back here. So again, I can be moving jumping and punching all at the same time rather than trying to move like this so it makes it a lot easier and this is just one quick example of you know why i really love this controller would this make you better at black desert online 
this would absolutely make me a lot better at Black Desert Online. Cause again, less inputs, but outputting more damage. More damage, better player. Okay, I kinda get it now. Customizable controls and extra buttons can be a big deal. One, they can help you aim and jump and do competitive shootery things more quickly. Plus you can physically adjust the pull length of the triggers to make them easier to depress more quickly, shoot more quickly. Two, they can space out previously awkward controls. I hate having crouch assigned to clicking the left stick or L3 in PlayStation parlance because when it's there and I'm panicking and running away from a monster in Elden Ring and whoops, I crouched mid run and now I'm smushed by the monster, Andrew Pancake. Customizing controls is easy here and you can do it for any game, even games that typically haven't had customizable controls. You can just draw a hard line and say, hey game, this button on the bottom, that's my new L3, you got it? And the game will be like, yup. And the game without customizable controls plays along because it thinks the new button you're hitting is actually L3, even though it's the bottom button. And yes, you did just pull off an incredible ruse. The game didn't even see it coming and you got off scot-free. Save for your knowledge that you now live a life of crime and what was I talking about? Oh right, three. It can legit make games more accessible. Imagine my complaints about crouching, but about actual things for a person with limited motor functions. This controller could help them put the buttons they need the most at a spot that is comfortable for them to hit. All right, so let's break this down. Hardware, you get a carrying case replacements for your joysticks so you can fine tune to your aesthetic tastes or maybe you want the shorter ones for quick twitch reactions or the longer ones to allow more of a gradual ramp in your movement two options each for the two button slots on the back of the controller and switches on the triggers to introduce physical stops at different points you just click you also get a braided usb cable you have this connector to hold the cable in place if you're having an intense wired session and you're worried about ripping your controller loose you have this to make sure you don't do that the controller is compatible with playstation's controller charging station and the carrying case has this little velcro port in the back so you can charge it while it's inside and the controller has enhanced slip resistant grips. Also, you can fully replace your joysticks if they get worn out or start suffering drift. That's nice as it's normally something where you need to take it to a professional shop or buy a whole new controller. No, not anymore. Just open it up, buy a new joystick for 20 and your repair is done at home quickly and easily. Software. Well, last new hardware thing that leads into software, these function buttons both do the same thing, which maybe that's a missed opportunity to add even more customization, but whatever. Press them to quick swap profiles. When you first boot up the controller, your PlayStation will, I mean, it's gonna update, but then it'll give you the option to customize and make some profiles. And you can make a shooter preset or a driving preset, or a game-specific one, like for Astro's Playroom or God of War, and save it, and then swap between profiles really easily. You can save lots and lots of different presets, but you can assign your most commonly used four to these four slots and swap between them by pressing the function button and your chosen face button. Cool stuff. You can also adjust vibration intensity, stick sensitivity, dead zones and ramping speeds for the sticks and the triggers. And again, any and all of this can be set to a preset and changed to be something completely different for a different game and a different preset. And you can mess around and try out your settings in PlayStation's well done setup menu for the thing. You can even adjust audio settings for the preset. So lots of customization. You can swap controls for any game to give yourself that much more speed or comfort. The menus work well, the extra buttons are nice, it's more repairable. You can really tailor your experience with the joysticks, triggers, and even the vibration. So do you need this? Still, no. Need probably isn't the right word. Again, 
No game features are locked behind it, but it's worth considering if you're a gamer in search of more comfortable or more responsive button setups for your game, or if you just wanna be able to jump and shoot that much quicker because you have practiced plenty. And when you get to that level, those milliseconds make a big difference. While you're weighing going pro in your game of choice, come on down to app and check out this controller in person. You can also browse online or give us a call and talk to an expert here for tips on how to get better at your game of choice, maybe, or just in-depth knowledge of electronics, definitely. If you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe to stay tuned for all of our latest tech. Thanks for watching and happy gaming.